What up YouTube? Uh, it's been a while, but now that it's Black Friday and everyone's buying up the sales, uh, Vinegar Syndrome and Severin especially, I thought I would do a little video showing off my moderately sized Severin collection before I get like a bunch more from the sale. So uh, I'll start off with the out of print Lucho Fulci box set which is Perversion Story, Eroticist, and The Psychic. Uh, all three in this box. This is, like I said, an out of print box set. Um, I've had it for quite a while. I'm a big Lucho Fulci fan, so. Uh, I have um, Perversion Story, the Blu-ray, Mondo Macabre put it out, and Psychic, I believe Ronin Flicks or Scorpion put it out. So I'm just waiting for the Eroticist to come out on Blu-ray, but I don't know if anyone will actually release it or not. Um, kind of a more obscure title. So looking at you, Severin, to put a nice Blu-ray of Eroticist out. But I mean, this is a cool box set. I don't really collect DVDs anymore, but um, that one I'm not gonna really get rid of because it's a cool box set and it's out of print. So the first one, these are like in no order at all. Um, I have the all the colors of the dark and all the colors of Giallo box set. I think I did a review of this one when I first got it. Uh, really cool box, double Blu-ray collection. Then Lucio Fulci's The Devil's Honey, numbered 40 of 1000. I believe this is the slipcover is out of print. I think you can still get just the standard Blu-ray um, for the sale right now. Um, I have Combat Shock slipcover, still in a blue case because the black case won't actually fit in the slipcover. It's too tight. Um, this one's signed by Buddy G, 526 of 2000. It came with a piece of the film and a book, American Nightmares, the book, which is kind of like a diary of a film set diary kind of then probably my favorite release from Severn up to date uh, Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile 2 this is would you believe a Jaws ripoff um, but with a crocodile it's actually probably one of the most fun films in this whole collection that I have Killer Crocodile number uh, the first one especially is probably one of the better um, Italian ripoff films that I've seen and one of the best releases Severin's put out. Then Wax Mask with a slipcover. Um, Dario Argento presents. This was supposed to be directed by Lucio Fulci. Uh, he wrote the script and then passed away before he had a chance. Uh, Sergio Stivaletti directed it. He was like a makeup effects guy so it's heavy on the gore and makeup effects but it's a later one. I think it's in the mid to late 90s. Um, so it, it definitely doesn't have that like 80s Italian charm to it, but it's still like a decent enough um, gore film. I just w would love to have seen what Fulci would have done with it. Uh, and then this weird film, St. Bernard, uh, this is a bizarre movie. I still am trying to process what happened in this movie. It is so messed up. Um, I'm not really like um, into experimental films, so I don't really know what to make of this movie. But I mean, it's it's an oddity. It's cool, just weird. Um, Death warmed up slipcover. Uh, this is a cool, I believe it's from New Zealand, um, gore film, uh, reminiscent of old Peter Jackson and Body Melt, kind of like that feel to it, like super gore heavy. Uh, convoluted plot um, but it's pretty fun and then those are all the slip covers and um, special editions that I have uh, so the Fulci box set all the colors of the dark devil's honey combat shot killer croc one and two wax work wax mask uh, st. Bernard and death warmed up and then the regular editions I have invasion of the blood farmers with the little rainbow severn which is weird because they only did it on this one release I don't know why but um, this is a cool, weird 70s movie. Um, 
I enjoyed it. It's just like another one of those kind of weirdo films. I don't really know what to make of it. And then probably my favorite Jess Franco film, uh, Bloody Moon. Uh, I know this isn't really on the top of a lot of people's lists, but I'm a big fan because it's more of a slasher than um, anything else. Uh, and it's pretty gore heavy. There's the infamous scene with the giant buzzsaw and I mean it's good gore so um, I'm not the biggest Jess Franco fan so I do enjoy Bloody Moon and then Kung Fu Trailers of Fury Volume 1 I mean I love trailer compilations and this one is right up there as one of the better ones all the really cool Kung Fu trailers there's good commentary and stuff on it so um, I would definitely recommend picking this one up and of course I also have Return of Kung Fu Trailers of Fury. This is volume two. Two bone cracking hours. So I'm a big fan. I collect 35 millimeter trailers. Um, and this is you know, two hours of Kung Fu trailers with great commentary. Um, it's it's a, a really good release. So sorry if I'm kind of flying through all these. Just, this is just like a collection overview. So then we have Shocking Dark. This movie is fantastic. Uh, if you don't own it, go buy it. It's just like one of the most insane movies. It's Terminator, Aliens. It's like, uh, it's just ridiculous. Great, great movie. Um, I highly recommend. And it's, of course, Bruno Mattei, the schlock master himself. And then Robo War. This is another completely outrageous Robocop predator ripoff like um, It's th these movies are like so insane so crazy so much fun Like you could get together with a bunch of people pop some corn watch it And you wouldn't stop laughing the whole time or if you're like me You would appreciate because I really love these Italian schlock films um, I appreciate them for what they are, you know the limited budget and just kind of cash in on the what the craze was at the time and stuff so and i believe this one comes with a soundtrack uh i think shocking dark might have come with a soundtrack as well i could be wrong though and then another mad crazy italian film night killer aka texas chainsaw massacre two or three um this movie also really messed up really weird don't really know what to make of it it's like two movies in one because they had two different directors um there's a real weird history behind the film um i mean another bruno Mattei, obviously so uh but it's good it's like this is another sit down if you have a, a film group or anything people that appreciate really wacky movies this is a good one to watch so my friends and i all watched it and we had um, a great time uh and then a lot of italian stuff uh paganini horror luigi cozzi um the soundtrack in this movie is is unreal it's so good uh killer violinist um goes after this 80s female rock band as they're shooting uh their music video in um this abandoned house it's uh quite entertaining it also has um donald pleasance and uh I'm, i don't want to mess her name up uh Nicolodi, no, I'm gonna mess her name up. Uh, Daria Nicolodi, I believe that's how you say it. I'm um, Lucio Ful or uh, I mean Daria Argento's ex-wife, uh, Asia Argento's mother. And then the final Bruno Mattai and the final Blu-ray in my collection, uh, The Other Hell. This is like a non-sploitation, um, I guess non-sploitation, yeah. Uh, this movie is fantastic. It's so good. Bruno Mattei gets a lot like a really bad rep for being just like a cheesy Kind of whatever director, but this movie is great Like they had a deal on the five films for 25 bucks and this was one of them and this was worth the 25 bucks alone So I uh, thoroughly enjoy it. Thanks Severin for putting this out and then on to my smaller InterVision DVD collection I have Zombies the beginning uh, This is these are the next four are Bruno Mattei films. These are the other four that I got in the five for 25 uh, These were like later ones 2007 Still low-budget zombie films um, 
just like shot way later in his career. And then the pseudo sequel, I believe, is Island of the Living Dead. It's one way or the other. One of them is the first one, and the other one is the sequel, which they're not really. But um, yeah, again, this 2006. This might be the first one. And then Zombies, the beginning, might be the pseudo sequel. So uh, yeah, so Intervision, they put out, they release kind of weirder, um, low budget um, anomalies, kind of, you know on their DVD label, which is like a sub-label of Severin. And then I have In the Land of the Cannibals. Uh, again, another Bruno Mattei. Uh, I'm not really a big cannibal fan. I don't really watch a lot of cannibal movies, so I haven't even opened these ones yet. But uh, I couldn't pass up the deal, especially to get the other hell on Blu-ray for 25 bucks, so. These DVDs were essentially just for free. Uh, and then finally, Mondo Cannibal. Uh, again, not even open because I don't really watch a lot of cannibal movies, but I'm more of a trauma roughy kind of guy. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, I just don't. I mean, I'm an, I'm an animal activist kind of, so I don't really like cannibal movies because there's a ton of like animal cruelty in them. So, I mean, I know it's like a, like a, I don't know, whatever. I'm just not a big fan, so. Uh, and then my final Intervision um, Ausploitation Trailer Explosion, another trailer compilation, 65 jaw-dropping vintage coming attractions. Um, I love a lot of these films on here, Road Games, uh, Mad Dog Morgan, Tur Stunt Rock, Turkey Shoot, uh, Dead End Drive-In, BMX Bandits, like these are all, and a lot of them were released, um, Severn released them, so. And that's pretty cool. It's a, a really good um, kind of look at the Australian uh, film industry from the late or mid 70s, was it? Oh, early 70s to late 80s. So 165 minutes. This is a pretty good release. I'm not a big DVD fan, but um, I like Intervision. I like these trailer compilations. So, so yeah. Um, kind of quick little overview of all I have the Fulci box set and then the rest of the Severn and Intervision stuff uh, I have a bunch of new stuff coming um, because of Black Friday so I'll probably try and do like an update video after I get my vinegar syndrome and Severn uh, packages in but uh, until then uh, happy shopping and thanks for watching.